Hello and welcome to Doctor Who Season 26B. In today's video, we'll be covering Season 32 of Doctor Who. So, let's get started. Season 32 will be the last season for Richard Griffiths as the Doctor, the sixth season for Michael French as Henry, the third season for Lisa Bauman as Billy Summerfield, the second season for Stephen Garber as producer and Colin Brake as script editor. Early on, Richard Griffiths announced that he would be stepping down as the Eighth Doctor at the end of Season 32, as he felt he had stayed long enough. This season would also have a slight increase in episodes, with now seven stories and 22 episodes. The first episode would be Return of the Living Dad, 8th to the 22nd of July, by Kate Orman. Bernice Summerfield was seven when her father disappeared. They say he turned and ran from the Daleks in battle. They say he was a coward. They were wrong. For years, Benny has searched for her father. The Doctor takes her and Henry to England, 1983. There, she at last discovers Admiral Isaac Summerfield, leading a motley crew of alien fighters and fanboys. Their mission? To save extraterrestrials stranded on Earth. But what is Benny's father doing 500 years in his own past? And why have he been waiting for the Doctor to, ar to arrive? Can Benny really trust the man she's been looking for her whole life? This episode mainly focuses on Bernice as she finds her long-lost father, Admiral Isaac Summerfield. The next episode would be The Romance of Crime, 29th of July to the 12th of August by Gareth Roberts. The TARDIS brings the Doctor, Bernice and Henry to the Rock of Judgment, a court, a prison and a place for execution. Built into a rocket-powered asteroid, th there they become embroiled in an investigation by the 15th finest lawmen. What connects uh, the macabre gallery of the artist Menlo Stokes with the slaughter of a survey team on a distant planet? Why is Margot, chief of security, behaving so strangely? And which old enemy for the Doctor are aboard the unmarked spaceship making its way to, towards the rock the next episode would be shakedown 19th of august to the 2nd of september by terence Dix. for thousands of years the frontarians and rutans have fought a brutal war across the galaxy now the frontarians have a secret plan to destroy the rutan race a secret plan the doctor is racing against time to uncover this story would have given us a full look into the Fontaran Rutan War, which has been referenced for many years and talked about. The next episode would be Venusian Lullaby, 19th of September to the 23rd of September, by Paul Leonard. Venus is dying. When the Doctor, Bernice and Henry arrive, they find an ancient and utterly alien civilization on the verge of oblivion. War is brewing between those who are determined to accept death and those desperate for salvation, whatever the cost. Then a space-faring race arrives, offering to rescue the Venusians by moving them all to Earth three billion years before mankind is due to evolve. Are the newcomers' motives as pure as they appear? And will the Doctor allow them to save his old friends by sacrificing the future of humanity? The next episode would be Damaged Goods, 30th of September to the 21st of October by Russell T Davies. The Doctor, Bernice and Henry arrive at the Quadrant, a troubled council block in fact of Britain. There's a new drug on the streets, a drug that's killing to a plan. Somehow, the very ordinary people of the Quadrant are involved, and so amidst the growing chaos, a bizarre trio move into number 43. The year is 1987. A dead drug dealer has risen from the grave. An ancient weapon is concealed beneath human tragedy, but the Doctor soon discovers that the things people do for their children can be every bit as dangerous as any alien menace. As he uncovers the link between a special child, an obsessive woman, and the desperate bargain made one dark Christmas Eve. This story would be set in 1987 and would have seen the Doctor Henry and Bernice investigating a new drug named Smile, which is being sold by the Kappa, a drug dealer who apparently died many years ago. It turns out that a Gallifrey machine named N-Form 
was bonded with the Kappa's corpse and took on his identity. Enform was created for the war against the great vampires and it is looking for vampiric waveform. It finds it in a boy named Gabriel Tyler and his twin who his mother gave away in 1977. Gabriel's mother, Winnie, sold Gabriel's twin, Stephen, to the Jericho family as money was low. Gabriel had a low-level glamour and people viewed him however they wished. He was also mildly telepathic. The twins were psychically linked and when they were separated, it damaged the connection, which unknowingly caused Gabriel to drain energy from Stephen. After 10 years... Ava Jericho brought the sickly Stephen to Winnie, asking her to exchange the damaged goods for a healthy son. The proximity between the twins caused Gabriel to drain the remaining energy from Stephen, which ended up killing him and activating N-Form. N-Form merges with Stephen's mother, Ava and Gabriel and goes out on a killing spree. However, the doctor is able to deactivate Enform by causing Ava's death, which leaves Gabriel in a vegetated state. This would have been a quite experimental and dark story. However, it's considered one of the best stories of the Richard Griffiths era and one of the best stories Russell T Davies has ever written. And it also made a lot of Doctor Who fans his top tens. The next episode would be Iceberg, 28th of October to the 11th of November by David Banks. In 2006, the world was about to be overwhelmed by a disaster that might destroy human civilization: the inversion of Earth's magnetic pole. Deep in an Antarctic base, the Flipback team is frantically devising a system to reverse the change in polarity. Above them, the SS Elysium carries its jet-set passengers on an ultimate cruise. On board is Ruby Duval, a journalist, set to record the flip-back moment. Instead, she finds a man called the Doctor and his friends Bernice and Henry, and she finds old enemies with the Doctor, silver giants at work beneath the ice. This story would have featured the return of the Cybermen. However, we would have seen a different side to the Cybermen. It would have been a typical Cyberman convert Earth story, but for a good reason. To stop um, the humans from suffering by what's happening due to climate change. This is a message about what Earth could look like in which was at that point 11 years time. The final story would be Rebirth, 18th of November to the 2nd of December by Ben Aronovich. This would have been Richard Griffiths' final stories, The Eighth Doctor. The TARDIS lands on Earth in London, 1999, on New Year's Eve, but they soon hear a blood-curdling scream. But when they get to the victim, he's the five of a mouth. The Doctor knows that this is the work of the Master. The Master is out for revenge and have a deadly plan to restore his body back to its prime. The time is running out. The Doctor must stop the Master, but will he survive? This story is a lot like the TV movie, however with some changes. Firstly, the setting of San Francisco is changed to London, and unlike the TV movie, nobody dies at the beginning. The Doctor, Henry and Bernice explore London for a while, but they soon hear about strange goings-on in the city, strange kidnappings and murders. Then, they soon hear a blood-curdling scream, but he is the size of a mouth, and the Doctor soon sees a shadow of a man in the alleyway trying to flip away and we learn that the murderer and the man who's been causing havoc in the city is in fact the master still played by Anthony Ainley and for the last time at this point the master is a mess after experimenting with so many different races and species 
his DNA have become corrupted and unrecognisable and his body is slowly decaying. However, he knows the Doctor has a secret Gallifrey machine hidden in his TARDIS called the Reformer. It's an old Gallifrey machine created by Rassilon, so if he ran out of regenerations, he could restore all of them. However, the machine was banished and was placed in an old TARDIS, which turned out to be the Doctor's. But the Doctor never knew it was in there. Throughout the story, the Doctor and co run around London trying to get the Master until he ends up inside the TARDIS. But the Doctor soon learns that if the machine is to be used, it will destroy Earth at midnight due to how unstable it is. The Doctor is determined to stop him. However, like in the TV movie, he is captured and tied up and is made to, to look in the machine, which nearly drives him insane. But will give the Master new lives. Soon later, he breaks free and works with Henry and Bernice um, to pilot the TARDIS off Earth, which should give them time to save it. But in the planet's but they're in the planet's atmosphere, but and it will still destroy it either way. The Doctor and the Master soon get into a fight, and while this is happening, the TARDIS leaves the atmosphere. Whilst the Master is knocked out, the Doctor rewinds time, which means the machine is powered off and Earth is safe, and in fact the universe. However, the Master wakes up and opens the doors to the TARDIS. Whilst they're in space, the ma however, the Master is pulled out of the TARDIS, but he manages to shoot the Doctor dead with a Time Lord gun. The Bernice closes the door to the TARDIS, and the dying Doctor sets the coordinates and then falls to the ground. He tells Henry that he thinks this body has had it. He then reminds Henry of regeneration, but explains it to Bernice. He sighs and states, I think this might be it for me. After all, Nothing lasts forever, and then he falls fully dead to the ground. But then suddenly, a burst of bright light forms around the Doctor. Bernice and Henry watch as the old man begins to reshape and reform into a much younger man. The regeneration effect begins to die down and we're introduced to the ninth Doctor, who would have been played by Eowyn Griffith. And then, the episode ends. And that concludes season 32 of Doctor Who, a very popular season. Many were liking in the era of Garwood and Brake so far, and they were very excited for the new era of the Ninth Doctor. So join me next time for season 33. Until then, thank you for watching, and goodbye.